already covered the countless benefits of having a NAS or network attached storage device. From safely backing up important documents and files regularly, to sharing and streaming photos, music, and movies to your TV and other media devices, like the BoxyBox. But sometimes you want or even need access to your files when you aren't home. And luckily, if you've been backing up and storing your files to the DNS325, you have plenty of options available to you. But one in particular is a long-standing champion in simplicity and security. FTP, or File Transfer Protocol, is a way for people to download files and upload others. Similar to the way HTTP is a way to transfer text over the internet, FTP is a simple way to send and receive files. If you've ever downloaded a file from the internet, you've most likely used FTP and may not have even known it. Now let me show you how to set up your DNS 325 as an FTP server. Most likely you have a router or access point at home that shares your internet connection with every other internet enabled device in your house. And as such, your router dishes out internal IP addresses and keeps your computer and other devices safely away from outside access. But if you're running your own FTP server, you'll want to poke a hole in the firewall and point port 21 to your share center device. Start by logging into your router and click on status. At the bottom, look for the IP address of your device. In this case, our DNS 325 is IP address 192.168.0.100. We'll be using this in a moment, so be sure to jot this down. Now click on advance up on the top and you'll be taken to the virtual server list. This is where we'll forward the FTP port 21 to the NAS. Click on the application name and select FTP. Click the left arrows and it will auto-populate the port number. And below that, under the IP, into the IP address of your device. Ours was 192.168.0.100. And check the box to enable the virtual server before clicking on Save Settings. Now that you've successfully forwarded the FTP port 21 to your Share Center NAS, We'll want to set up dynamic DNS that will allow you to create a friendly host name as opposed to an IP address that points to your home or office. Plus, dynamic DNS will update your home's always changing IP address because most of us don't have a static IP. D-Link offers a free dynamic DNS account. You can easily set one up in a couple of minutes by going to dlinkddns.com. If you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up a dynamic DNS account, be sure to watch our other videos. After you've set up a dynamic DNS account, Log into your Share Center device and click on Management. Then click on Network Management and Dynamic DNS on the left. Click Enable and enter your account information below. You can use the drop down to auto select the server address for many common Dynamic DNS services. Enter the host name you created through your Dynamic DNS account. Ours was dlinktv.dlinkddns.com and enter your username and password. After clicking on Save Settings, in a few short moments you'll be prompted with a status letting you know that your device successfully connected to the Dynamic DNS service. Now it's time to set up the FTP server on our Share Center NAS. Still logged into your Share Center NAS device, click on Management, Account Management, and the New button under the User Groups in the User Settings section. Follow the prompts to create a new user account that you'll use to access the FTP server. Click Next on the Join the User to a Group screen. And don't worry that there are no groups yet, because we'll create one in just a moment. Set the permission for the new user. Since we want to be able to download and upload files to the FTP server, check the box for Read and Write. Then select the Access method. Obviously, we want FTP selected since we want the new user to be able to access the FTP server. You can also set quota limits on the amount of storage space allowed for each user. But since this is my account, I want unlimited storage, so we'll leave it at zero for unlimited. After finishing creating a new user, you'll need to create a new group. Still under user groups, scroll down until you see group settings and expand the section and click on the new button. Again, follow the prompts to create a new group. We're creating an admins group and be sure to add the new users to the new group. Set the permissions for the group, in our case this is for admins, so we want to grant full read-write permissions to the NAS. Be sure to select FTP under the access methods and set the quota limits. Now we're ready to start the FTP server. Click on Application Management, and under the FTP server settings, you can leave the default settings. But under the FTP server status, expand the section 
and click on Start FTP Server. And that's it. You're ready to go. And now let's see how to access your new ShareCenter NAS FTP server remotely. First, you'll need an FTP client. There are many available, including a couple free open source and Mac OS X options. And each have the same basic FTP access settings as I'll show you here. Start by opening up your FTP client and you should be prompted with a new connection setup. In the host field, enter the dynamic DNS hostname you created earlier, the username and password you created on your ShareCenter NAS device, and be sure to use the default port 21 that you configured on the router. Connect and you'll be able to see all the contents of your NAS device, and now you can upload and download files freely. I hope you've learned how to get more out of your DNS-325 network storage device and discover the benefits of using your NAS as an FTP server to access your files remotely. If you have any recommendations on features you'd like to see in a video, please post them in the comments below and we'll do our best to get to them. See you next time.